Disclaimer. The views expressed on this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik are solely the opinions of the host and the guest. The content of the conversation is not reflective of the institutions or establishments mentioned therein. Take all these opinions with a pinch of salt and a dash of lime if needed. Namaskara, good morning, good afternoon or good evening whenever you're watching or listening and welcome to this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik. My guest this week is Johan Warhols. Johan and I met each other through Twitter where he put out a tweet about um, wanting to be on podcasts and I was recommended to him uh, through Andrew who was previously on the podcast. And so here we are. Uh, in this episode, we spoke about topics related to his activity on Twitter, the exchange of energies between people and positivity. So I'm sure that there's a ton that you can relate to and a ton that you can take away from this episode. So without further ado, I present to you, Johan, on this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik. Hey, Johan, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, before we get started, uh, let the people know who you are, what you do, um, what you do on Twitter, uh, your likes, dislikes, <laughs> aspirations, anything you're willing to share. Sure. Um, yeah, so my name is Johan Bornholtz. I uh, live in Phoenix, Arizona, and I... I've spent most of my career in marketing, um, recently got into PR as well. Uh, so I, 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 that's what I do for a living. Um, in my, I would say my, uh, favorite thing in the world is, is, uh, connecting with people and hanging out with people. And I'm a, I'm a, uh, proud extrovert in that sense. Um, I like, uh, being in social situations, connecting with people, getting, figuring out, you know, what, what makes people, uh, smile and tick and, and, and all that good stuff. And, uh, in my free time, I, I, uh, do a lot of camping. I do a lot of, uh, running and cycling, um, I like exercising. And, uh, and then I'm also uh, a little bit of a musician on the side, um, just as a hobby. I play guitar and piano, and and so um, yeah, I like I like flexing my creativity when I can. I like uh, I like being around people, and and uh, that's that's the the most concise I think I can be <laughs> in terms of who I am and what I do. Yeah, of course, of course. Um... As I mentioned, uh, Twitter initially, uh, Johan and I were introduced to each other through Twitter by a good friend, Andrew, um, who was on the podcast recently. So uh, talk to me about Hype Chat. What was what was the sort of idea behind it and how long have you been doing it? So, um, so we just did our fourth Hype Chat mm. and... Uh, I, I guess technically it was the fifth in that the first was, was a bit of a, um, uh, off the cuff, just crazy situation where I was, uh, um, I had, a, I had some free time. Mm. I had drank some cold brew and had a ton of energy <laughs> and I, I tend to, um, kind of get a lot of energy from giving mm. energy, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I thrive off of being energetic towards other people and then, and then having them kind of respond, uh, back in an energetic way. And so I, one day just, I was just full of energy. I posted on Twitter that I was, that I was drinking cold brew. I was super riled up and that I, I just wanted to hype people up. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, respond to me and tell me something uh, or just respond to this and I'll hype you up. And so people just started responding and, um, and I would go on their profile and I'd find something fun about them and I would just uh, retweet their response with just like a something about them that I liked. And it, it, 
really it really resonated with people. I think a, a lot of people enjoyed it, um, and I made a lot of new connections, and uh, and it was just really fun. So um, a week w- over the next week, I kind of thought. Uh, it would be fun to kind of make something recurring uh, that's similar and try to have it not just be me giving the hype, but also get everybody to kind of just create this chaotic back and forth uh, sharing of energy and positivity and things like that. So, um, so yeah, I just threw together like a graphic um, and then kind of promoted it a couple of times. and. And the first one was about a month ago uh, on Wednesday. I do them every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and yeah, it was just really fun. And a lot of people have kind of come to just in just one short month. A lot of people have kind of come to like schedule it into their into their Wednesdays. And, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of new people every week. I'm seeing a lot of recurring people every week. There's a couple of brands that um, enjoy, that kind of heard about it and brands that I had interacted with in the past. Uh, so uh, like Flips, the pretzel, the chocolate covered pretzels, they, <clears throat> they reached out and were like, oh, this is super fun. Um, and so I was like, do you guys want to do a giveaway? And they were like, yeah. And so we did uh, last, the second week we did a giveaway of a bunch of Flips product. Um, the first or the third week we did a giveaway of a t-shirt of an, another brand called hype, <laughs> a hella hype company, um, did a t-shirt that's this like fresh print style, um, hype chat, uh, design. And, um, they sell those t-shirts, uh, online and they did a giveaway of that. So it just, it just seemed like a lot of people were looking for a, something that was just dripping with positivity and and like good energy and then be um, something like in the middle of the week where you tend to start losing a little energy and just something that kind of gets you through the rest of the week. So it's, it just seems like it was something that really the people were looking for. And um, so it's been really fun. It's awesome. It's awesome. You said something very interesting about like the give and take of energy which makes yeah. me do is which makes me assume that you are a believer in energies and like the people or energies that people share. Is that safe to assume? Yeah, I think I think uh, I think humans are kind of inherently empathetic in mm. that they um, they read we read each other's kind of vibes, moods, energies, however you want to describe it. But we we kind of read each other's moods and and we we tend to reflect them back. I think, I think people who don't do that tend to be on, on the, they're, they tend to be outliers uh, in, uh, in the grand scheme of humanity. I think people, you know, if, if you encounter someone that's in a good mood, you tend to feel better. Mm. Um, if, if you, if you encounter somebody that's sad, then, then you, you probably will feel some, form of sadness with them. I think that's kind of our natural state. So, uh, so yeah, I think, I think people, um, you know, reflect each other's energies, moods, whatever you want to call it. And, and that's, that's definitely, uh, something, I think that's why hype chat, uh, works so well is because I bring the initial like, yeah, let's do this. And then people feed off that and they give it out and then they, people feed off that and then they give it out. And it's just this back and forth. Right. 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 Uh, how do you important, how important do you think is the concept of give and take in all of this? Cause I, I personally am a bit of a spiritual person. So I mm-hmm. do believe that there's a lot of give and take in the universe and amongst people and so on. Um, so sure. how do you see this concept of hype chat as uh, m- like a larger scale way of people to give and to sort of get the energy? Because you mentioned that initially. Yeah, so I think, um, like I said, I think I think our, our kind of naturally empathetic tendencies mm. uh, fit with that um i I definitely think that there's there's room there for like a a spiritual kind of approach to it 
Um, but I think, I think inherently, you know, it's like, it's like with a, I mean, you can even bring it down to like, the, um, like with a dog, right? Mm-hmm. Like if, if you, if you encounter a dog and you're excited and, and they're excited, you know, they, they kind of feed off of that. But if you encounter a dog and you're very stern and kind of firm with the dog, then they might be, you know, mm-hmm. a little afraid or, or they might be nervous or whatever. And I think, um, you know, people say a lot of times that dogs can read people or animals in general can read people. Um, and I think that's a little bit of the same, the same concept in that, like you, you put out whatever mood or energy, I think energy is a good word for it, but you put out whatever energy you have and, and the world will, will, uh, interpret that and respond in some way, uh, whether that's, uh, aggressively or whether that's kindly or whether whatever it just depends on each person but i think i think um in a lot of ways we we can affect how people interact with us by the way we interact with them Mm. and and so yeah I, i i i don't i'm not much of a i guess there's that there's that distinction between religious and spiritual i think in a lot of ways i'm spiritual mm. and that i i i really enjoy you know meditation and i enjoy kind of um taking myself out of out of uh my daily experience and trying to understand it as a bigger picture thing but um but i'm not religious so it's so i i i dance around it a little bit mm. but um but i think i i think i agree in that there's definitely a level of spirituality and how we communicate outwards and how that's returned back to us Mm, definitely and for you from more of a physical versus social media sort of um, influence of hype chat how does that influence you in your everyday life if it does so i think i think in a lot of ways hype chat is a is a is an online manifestation of how i try to be Mm. uh, on a day-to-day basis a lot of people that know me would would say that i'm a very energetic um i try to be very positive i think a positive is a a good way to describe not everybody can't nobody can be all positive all the time right but um i think overall people that would describe me as kind of an energetic positive guy and so i think hype chat is just like the logical manifestation of who I am in person, you know, brought about online. Um, but I mean, there, there have been, even in, you know, just the four times that we've, that I've done hype chat, there have been already times where I was feeling negative. I was feeling down. I was feeling tired or whatever. And I went on and did it. And, and I came out of that feeling, you know, like my normal self. So yeah, I think uh yeah, I think it's it's very aligned with who I am, but it definitely has that effect and I hope that has that effect on people who participate too because that's that's really my goal is just to hype people up. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned sort of like the couple of brand collaborations that you got through Hype Chat. Um how do you see this growing? Or have you yeah. had some thought? <laughs> um I have not put any thought into that Mm. uh other than what has already happened so the the t-shirts came about almost immediately Mm -hmm. um and they came about through a connection that i have a a friend that i have on twitter um that runs hella hype company and he was like this is great let me throw together a shirt for you and and um and so that that was kind of a an easy one the flips one was also easy because i've interacted with them a lot in the past um they sort of pseudo sponsored my honeymoon uh, huh? back in May, where they they sent me a bunch of uh, <clears throat> like coupons for free product that I could use along along our trip, and and so I I think I don't really have a like an agenda mm-hmm. with it. I I really just want it, it to stay fun and for people to, for it to be a positive thing for people every week. Um, if that translates to, you know, a bigger, a bigger network to, 
more partnerships to whatever it translates to. I'm totally open to whatever it, it ends up being, but um, my my intention with it is strictly just just for it to be fun and and, and positive. Mm. This is probably a slightly more random question, but um, how important do you think it is for us to sometimes just do things for fun rather than necessarily trying to uh, seek something out of it? So important. I think it's so important. Um, I I understand that when it comes to like our careers and our jobs, it's not it's not always possible to keep everything perfectly fun. I think you know, there, there's always, there's always that, you know, find what you love and then, and then make a career out of it. And then now there seems to be some pushback where like, if, if you some find something that you love and you make a career out of it, you might not love it as much anymore. Um, so I, I get that professionally it's, it's hard to keep it fun all the time, but I think the things that are fun for us should be, should be kind of protected in that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, something being fun is, is, is the game changer or it's the, it's the most important factor in whether or not you're going to do it often. Um, I, I say that, uh, a lot to people who are like trying to get in shape, for instance, uh, my degree is my degree is in exercise science, which is not my career at all, but it's something that I know about. And, and when people, you know, want to get into shape, I'm like, find something that is fun for you find something that you don't see as a workout you see as as a fun hobby and you'll do it all the time and you'll get in shape as a result of it and i think that applies to everything um you know i know a lot of i i love playing my guitar playing my piano i that is fun for me um i know a couple of a handful of musicians that have gone you know further in their in their studies with it that have turned it into their career and I don't feel the same kind of love and passion for it that they might have used that, that they used to have. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think, I think it's important to, to, to keep things fun and to have things that you do that are fun for you. Um, it, it's not always everything. I think it's important to know how to do things that you don't necessarily want to do, but um but yeah, I mean, in terms of like hype chat, I think if it turned into this chore where I had to find sponsors and I had to promote it and I had to do all this stuff, I think I, I would I would lose my my passion for it. So um, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that definitely does. That definitely does. <laughs> that definitely does. And you brought up an interesting point in terms of how it's not always possible for us to have fun with everything. Um, but because you brought up this thought of, um, you said you had your degree in exercises and uh, fitness related uh, studies. Um, this was just a thought that sort of popped up. You know, we told that we should uh, lift weights or do a certain thing to build a certain level of health. But then sometimes you don't necessarily find that as fun. Um, is it sort of like a balancing act, not necessarily from the perspective of exercise and fitness, but more so from like a generalistic sense in terms of having both of those in your life? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think, I think in a lot of ways people can find fun in kind of boring, you know, activities. Mm -hmm. I think it, it is up to us to kind of, have that mentality of like, okay, I need to clean the house and I'm not excited about it, but let me, you know, throw on my favorite music and sing at the top of my lungs while I'm, you know, sweeping and whatever. I think, I think there's ways to make things fun. Um, in terms of like, I mean, if, if we're going to use the exercise as an example, um, if you hate lifting weights or if you hate running, for instance, uh, then there are other options that could be fun for you. Right. And, and so, um, and then obviously fitness is also a bit of a, a spectrum and that like, you know, you have people who all they do is cardio, like running and cycling and, and whatever. And, and they're very healthy and very fit, but then you have people who all they do is, is lifting weights and, 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 you know, maybe sprints and, and 
they're a different kind of fitness, but they're also very healthy. So it, it just depends on what, uh, what interests you and what you find, uh, fun and what you find, um, interesting. And I think, I think that that can be the case with a lot of other things too. Uh, but I think finding that, that desire to do it, not because you have to, but because you enjoy it. Mm. I think that makes whatever your goal is, whatever task you want to accomplish, um, makes it just a thousand times easier to do if, if you're, if you're enjoying it or if you're looking forward to it. Right. Definitely. I agree. And going back to something that you enjoy doing at the moment on Twitter, which is hype chat as sort of as a parting question, uh, before we transition into the word association game, um, if there was somebody or maybe three people that you would like to join hype chat as like, by tweeting at you who would those three people be uh okay i this i have thought about um so dwayne johnson i feel like would love it Mm. and like and be just i mean it would that would just be so much fun because i feel like that's his vibe like he's a very positive you know outward energy guy uh you hear stories about him pulling his truck over to take selfies with fans like i feel like he would love it um oh man uh maybe what's his name daniel from schitt's creek i forget the actor's name i don't actually he, follow the show so i'm not sure yeah he i feel like he would be really fun too mm-hmm. uh and then i mean really any any celebrity that i admire uh and there's there's a handful of them. Ryan Reynolds would be hilarious. Oh, yeah. I feel like he would bring like a little bit of a different energy, but like still really fun. Um, so yeah, I'll say those three. Awesome. And Dwayne the Dog Johnson would be the one on top, I'd assume. For sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah I can see that because he does exude that energy whether yeah. you see him be it on interviews or anything like that. So I definitely get that. I definitely agree. So, well, yeah. uh, thank you so much for answering all of those questions. Uh, yeah, we are gonna, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we're going to transition into the word association game where okay. I give you five words and you respond to them in either three words or three different phrases. Um, the segment is called Bish Bash Bosh. And the goal with that is for me to sort of try and see if, you know, with the way that we respond to these words, there's connections in the way that we look at things. Because a lot of the times it's very easy for us to assume that Oh, just because this person is leaning towards a certain side in terms of politics or just personal beliefs, Um, you know, through responding to these words, you tend to see that there's a lot of similarities irrespective of what side of the spectrum you fall on. So, yeah, this is just a way for me to do that. And uh, these five words are recurring words that I ask every guest on the podcast. So am I responding to each word individually or are you giving me all the words and then I respond? We're doing each word individually. So for example, okay. if I was to say fun, what are the three things that come to your mind? And then we go on to hype and so on. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the first word is differences. What comes to your mind when I say the word differences? Um, okay. So acceptable. So like in that differences are acceptable. Um, uh, differences should be celebrated. Mm-hmm. And differences are, they're amazing. They're beautiful. I mean, I think that's, they're beautiful. I think if we were all the same, it'd be really boring. So. Very true. Very true. Uh, the second word is nuance. What are the three things that are sort of calling out to you when I say the word nuance? Uh, I think nuance is underrated. Mm. I think nuance is a skill Hmm. 
and <laughs> and uh, I think nuance requires a little bit of it requires greater understanding. Mm. Yeah, I like how you called it skill. I don't think anybody has said that before, but I can definitely yeah. see that making a lot of sense. Uh, the third yeah. word is learning. What What are the three things I sort of call out oh when God. I say the word learning? <laughs> it uh, could be anything. I'm gonna, yeah, anything. I'm going to say underrated again, okay. because I think, I think learning, especially into our adulthood, uh, is, is under, people don't put enough energy into that. Mm. Um, so I'm going to say uh, underrated. I'm going to say uh, essential. Mm. It's, it's probably the most important thing we can do in our lives. And um, and fun. It's I I feel like learning something new is just so fun and fascinating. And like that's it's great. Yeah, yeah. fun. It's awesome. Uh, the fourth word is empathy. What comes to your mind when they say oh. the word empathy? Empathy. Um, it's essential again. Mm -hmm. I would say essential again, just because it's, I mean, we, we cannot, we can't go through life without it. Um, So I guess selfless mm -hmm. in that like we need to take ourselves out of the equation in order to really feel it. And, um, and I, I keep repeating words, but underrated again, mm -hmm. because I think people, uh, you know, people tend to see empathy as a weakness, especially when you, when you look at certain prominent political figures and they proudly kind of speak against or go against empathetic tendencies and, and, and kind of try to frame them as a weakness. I think that's just the total opposite thing that shows their own weaknesses. So. Mm. True. Definitely. Cause I think there's a lot more strength in it than there is weakness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it requires, I mean, the, the ability to take yourself out of the equation is that's, that's a difficult thing because we all kind of see the world through our own lens and be able to see the world through somebody else's lens is, is really, really difficult to do. Beautiful. And the last word for this segment is similarities. What are the three things that come to your mind when I say the word similarities? <clears throat> so I think we all have them. Mm. Um, so, and, and they're, they're, you know, they're overlooked. So common and overlooked will be two of mine. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, they're also fun, you know, meeting, meeting someone that has similarities to you, whether that's a similar, you know, being from the same town or whether that's having the same interests. Uh, it's, it's always fun to make that connection. So. Definitely is. Definitely is. Well, yeah. thank you so much for playing along in this segment of Vish Bash yeah. Posh. Two more questions before we're done. The first sure. one is, how do you relate to people? How do I relate to people? So ideally, I, I want to... Um, I want to like celebrate and, and, and make them the focus of, of whatever it is. So if, if someone's telling me a story about something they experienced, my, what I'd like to do every time is, is, you know, celebrate or be empathetic or put, you know, make them the focus. Mm. Um, I think unfortunately, like a lot of people, the natural tendency, if I'm not paying attention is to try to relate to them by t 
telling them a similar story about my own life or my own experience. Mm, and, and I think lately I've been trying to steer away from that because then it, it feels like I'm just turning the focus around to myself. And, and so I, I have that kind of conflict of, of I'd like to do the, the former, but sometimes if I'm not paying attention, I'm not conscious of it, then I do the latter. Mm. That's that's definitely very very beautiful. Like a beautiful way to respond to the question because I do agree. It um, it takes a lot of sort of conscious thinking to be able to sort of make that separation. For so, sure. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, and the last question, well, it's not really a question. It's more so a request uh, for you to leave the listeners and the watchers with a message. Anything? Yeah. Anything you'd like to share? Um. So I think. Uh, I think the theme of everything is definitely, um, you know, find, put, put positivity and energy out and you'll get it back. So if you're feeling down or if you're feeling, um, you know, like imposter syndrome is a good example of this where, you know, a lot of people on Twitter, especially if you're in kind of that marketing community, like you, a lot of people feel imposter syndrome. And, and I found, I've, found that when I feel that way, if I go and celebrate other people, it takes that away from me. So I think, um, you know, celebrate others and you'll, you'll feel that same energy. Uh, and then, and then the other one is, is, um, just smile more. I think, I think just smiling is, so much more powerful than people give it credit for. Um, if you're in, in a kind of a crappy mood and you force yourself to just kind of crack a smile, I think it can make a lot of difference in, in how you're feeling. So that and join hype chat on Wednesdays. Definitely. Definitely. That was a wonderful way to close this <laughs> off. Uh, let the people know where you, where they can find you, Johan. So Twitter on Twitter. Um, my username is run wander wonder um kind of a, a a mouthful but that's what it's always been um same on instagram uh so i would say that those two are are definitely the most uh relevant and active places to find me um run wander wonder and then uh yeah from there there's you know there's random things yeah that i post that will connect me to other things like LinkedIn or whatever, depending on what situation. But um, I spend most of my time on Twitter and Instagram. So. Got it. I'll make sure to link those down below as well. Uh, cool. But thank you so much, Johan. I really appreciate you taking the time to do yeah. this and sharing your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you for her. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Uh, and for those yeah, of you listening you. and watching, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Thank you for watching this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik. Make sure to follow Johan on his social media accounts and mention something in the comment section below that you found interesting, intriguing, or relatable about this conversation. Make sure to also check the description box below for other sources of information and content that we've talked about today. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for being a part of the conversation and joining in on the platoon of perspectives. Until next time, stay safe, take care, and don't forget to keep your mind open to different perspectives because you never know random relatability might just be around the corner <laughs>